What's going on YouTube, Geosyn right here. In today's video, we're discussing about iOS downgrades, whether they are doable anymore, especially with saved SHSH blobs with R squared's tool, what you can do if you want to downgrade from iOS 17, if you can use the layout EA and stuff like that. Just some clarifications, because there seems to be a lot of confusion in the community. This video is brought to you by Tenorshare Reboot, a software that allows to repair your device if it's stuck in a boot loop or in recovery mode, DFU mode, black screen, stuff like that. Definitely check the program out in the link below. A free trial is available for both Windows and Mac OS, and it does support the latest devices. So you probably know that you cannot really downgrade iOS devices unless the version you're trying to downgrade to is signed. If you go here on my website on the signing status page and select your device, you can see all the signed iOS versions available for your device. In this case, it's probably going to be just iOS 17.4.1. But if you want to downgrade to a lower version, you might have a couple of choices or you used to have a couple of choices depending on what you did. There is this program over here called R Squared Blob Saver which allows you to save the SHSH tickets or blobs returned by the Apple signing server. And if you save these, technically you have the response that the server gives when you try to downgrade with a signed version. And you can theoretically make the device believe that it's still actually signed. Well, not really and not anymore. There are some components that are introduced in iOS versions, in newer iOS versions, like Cryptex 1, which prevent you from doing just that and make the SHSH blobs that you saved pretty much useless. Should you still save them? Yes. Once in a while, it's a good idea to go ahead and do save them because it takes a second to use this program. Just connect the device and press go, and that's it. And they might still become useful at some point in the future. We might be able to crack down how Cryptex 1 works and figure out a way to use these blobs again for downgrading. But as they stand right now, they're pretty much useless and saving them does not guarantee you any downgrade, at least not for now. They used to be pretty useful, especially with uh, Future Restore, a software that allows you to restore an IPSW, an iOS version, with signed blobs, which is essentially what you needed for a downgrade for a while. But Apple did patch that out by introducing more components. Now a lot of you ask me, well, if that is patched, can I use Delay OTA? Because Delay OTA is still working at the moment, and it's based on some um, profiles that Apple makes available for the enterprise market. Now, how this works is that once an iOS version stops being signed, for example 17.4, there is still a pretty large window, like three months or so, where the enterprise market can still upgrade to this version. But notice I said upgrade, not downgrade. If you're running iOS 17.4.1, those profiles are not going to help you to go back to 17.4. However, if 17.4 becomes unsigned and for some reason a jailbreak gets released for it and you're running, say, I don't know, iOS 15 and you would like to jump to a newer version, you can actually use the profile to go to 17.4 even if it's no longer signed, if you're still in the window. And we know full well when the window for each iOS version is going to end. I even have them on my website as well, which I probably do need to update for the latest version. But um, you do get the dates over here. For example, 17.2.1 will stop being signed forever on basically 21st of April. And for 17.4, it's listed here as latest version, it's not, it's 17.4.1, but 17.3.1 is going to be available up until June. So we do know when these are going to expire. You can see 17.3.1 itself is long gone, it's no longer signed, but the profile is still available. So if you would want to go from a lower version, like say iOS 13 to 17.3.1 and wait there, you can still do that with Delay OTA. Unfortunately, Delay OTA, as I explained in this article over here, which I'm going to link below, is not for downgrade. It's just for upgrading from older versions. Then you have the latest method, which is Semaphorin, an iOS downgrade tool that was just released. Well, this one is pretty easy to rule out. It's for A7 through A9 devices, so checkmate devices. Unless you have any of these devices over here, which I listed, it's going to be iPhone 5S, iPad mini 2, iPad Air 1, iPad Air 2, Mini 4, Mini 3, iPhone 6, 6 Plus, SE 2016, or iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, you're not going to be able to use it. But if you do have one of these devices, you can actually downgrade the various iOS versions, including, say, iOS 8, iOS 7, 7.2, 10.3.3, 11.1. How useful is this going to be for you? Not sure, because these devices are pretty old, and if you downgrade them to versions these old, it's probably going to be pretty much unusable for anything other than nostalgia, because these iOS versions have virtually no application left that is still compatible with them. So, yeah. 
not very useful. But if you just want to downgrade, for example, from iOS 17.4.1 to, say, iOS 16.4 and jailbreak with dopamine, the harsh reality is that you cannot do that nowadays, not even with saved SHSH blobs. There isn't really any good method to downgrade at the moment to unsigned versions, so the best thing you can do if you're waiting for a jailbreak is to just not update your device. There really isn't going back, especially for newer devices. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Geosnow. Till the next time, subscribe to stay updated and peace out.